Krishna everybody, my name is Janaki Kalidai and I'm very excited to be sharing with you some of Lord Nishingadev's pastimes with you on this very special occasion of his appearance day. Um, I beg for your mercy and for your blessings and also Srila Prabhupada's blessings of course. So in this um, class I'm going to be having three parts. Number one is going to be why do we serve Lord Nasringadev, why is he so important to us? Number two is a little pastime of his. And number three is um, how he was installed in the Mayapur temple. Part two, one. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is very, very important to us and we follow his teachings. He had many children and one of them was called Bimala Prasad, which we also know is known as um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur later became Srila Prabhupada's guru. When Bhimal Prasad was little, his dad gave him a little Kurma Diti, which he worships. And he was also given the Nishungadev Mantra before he learned the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But why did he do that? Well, Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, My dear son, before you can worship the deities Radharani and Krishna, you need to clean your heart. Therefore, you need the mercy of Lord Nasringadev. Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote five prayers to Lord Nasringadev in a book called Navadvipa Bhava Charanga. Now I'm going to read the five prayers from the book. Okay, but this is not the full version, this is just a simplified version. These prayers basically say, in my heart, there live six enemies, lust, anger, greed, desire to be famous, etc. With these six enemies, I can't serve Krishna with love. I beg at your lotus feet to please help me remove all my bad qualities, just like you destroy the demon Hiranyakashipu. Please destroy my bad qualities. Dear Lord Nusimadev, purify my heart. I beg for love of Radha and Krishna, and therefore I pray to you in the temple. Without your mercy, I can never become a devotee of Radha and Krishna. There is also um, a temple called Nishrimapali temple in Mayapur. And that is the place where Lord Nishringadev came to wash his hands after killing the demon Hiranyakashipu. There lies a deity of Lord Nishringadev, which has been there from Satya Yuga, which is a long time ago. So we learned that um, if our hearts are not clean, then we can't serve Krishna. Therefore, we need the mercy of Lord Nishringadev. But Lord Nishringadev is also known for um, protecting his devotees. For example, Prahlad Maharaj. That just brings me to the second part of this presentation. Once there lived a ferocious demon called Hiranyakashipu. He had a brother who was called Hiranyaksha. Hiranyaksha was killed by Varaha, the poor incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Hiranyakashipu wanted revenge. He performed austerities for 125 years, making the world an unbearable place to live. Lord Brahma met Hiranyakashipu and being impressed with his determination, granted him a boon. Hiranyakashipu asked that he would not be killed in either day or night. He would not be killed in land, air or water. He would not be killed by any man or beast. He would not be killed by any weapon. He would not be killed inside or outside his palace. Brahma granted all the boons. In this way, Hiranyakashipu terrorized and ruled the three worlds. In due course of time, Kayadu his wife became pregnant. So one day, Prahlad was born. 
He always thought and spoke about Krishna. He was friendly to everyone. As a five-year-old child, he would not be interested in playing sports. He went to a demon school, but was not interested in becoming a great demon leader. Instead of that, he would try to talk about Lord Vishnu to all of his friends whenever he had the time. Dear friends, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. When you chant his names and sing his names, you'll be happy. One day, Hiranyakashipu called for his son Prahlad and asked him what he learnt at school. Prahlad said, Serving the Lord is the goal of life. Hiranyakashipu was shocked and immediately called for Shanda and Amarka. Make sure no one pollutes his mind with this nonsense, he said. But nothing changed. Hiranyakashipu was furious. His own son was a devotee. He hated it. How can my own son be on the side of my enemy? He should be ruined. Hiranyakashipu became so angry that he tried to kill Prahlad in many horrific ways such as throwing him in a circle of cannibals, but nothing worked. Prahlad chanted the holy names and was always protected, even when Hiranyakashipu tried to poison his food. Frustrated, he asked, Where do you get these superhuman powers from? From the same source as you? From Vishnu. Where is that Vishnu of yours? Hiranyakashipu asked. Everywhere, Prahlad said. <laughs> is he also in this pillar? Yes, Prahlad said. Then I will kill him! As Hiranyakashipu smashed the pillar, Lord Nursimade, the half-man, half-line incarnation of Vishnu, appeared from the pillar and slayed him. He was killed neither on the land, sea, nor in the air, but on the lap of the Supreme Lord. He was killed neither during the day or the night, but in the twilight. He was killed by neither beast nor man, and was killed with no weapons but the nails of Lord Narsimhadev. Narsimhadev Bhagawan ki jai! Prahalad Maharaj ki jai! Hope you enjoyed that! Now I'm going to move on, on to part 3. How Lord Nishringadev was installed in the Mayapur temple. In 1984, 35 decoits with bombs and weapons attacked the Mayapur temple and they also stole the little deities of Prabhupada and Radharani. They also harmed the, some um, of the devotees. Everyone was then scared and really sad. Some people were also really angry. So the temple management then decided that they should install the deity of Lord Nishringadev. Long ago, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also had the same problems in the temple. So they installed the deity Nishringadev. But after they installed the deity, no problems ever happened again. It's not exactly easy at all to worship Lord Nishringadev because there are many rules. So that is when, when His Grace, Pankajanri Prabhu came in and the temple management decided that he would worship the deity. And do you know what? He still worships him today. One day, the temple got a big donation and they decided that they would install the deity. So, but like, who would carve it? So that's when they went to South India and found a very famous um, sculptor. When they asked the sculptor if he would carve the deity, he, he said no. But why did he say no? It was because the devotees wanted a certain form of Lord Nishingadev, who is called Ugar Nasimham, which is the most fiercest form of Lord Nishingadev ever. That's why the sculptor refused to carve the deity. The devotees went back home really sad and after that they tried many many more times to convince the sculptor but his answer was always no. One day the devotees went back to South India and tried to really convince the sculptor and you know what? 
The sculptor said, yes. But why did he say yes? It was because that in a village, um, they installed the deity of Lord Shringadev and they started neglecting the deity. So then after that, the whole town became a ghost town. So therefore, um, he didn't want to carve the deity. But then the sculptor, the sculptor got a letter from his Guru Maharaj, which said that the Guru Maharaj got a dream. And in that dream, it said that the Iskan Maipur devotees can install the deity of Lord Nishringadev. So therefore, the um, sculptor said yes, he would carve the deity. So he said that in six months, it, the, the sculpture of Lord Nishringadev would be ready. But after six months, he hadn't even started. That was because he didn't find the right stone. So the devotees thought, there are so many stones in India, South India, so why wouldn't he use it? It's because the sculptor needed a special stone, which was alive. After two months, he found the stone. And he said that after two weeks, he would be finished with Lorna Shringadev sculpture. After two weeks, the DT was ready. So he just decided to go and meet some friends, you know. So he locked the DT into, in his shed and went out. But at that time, Lord Nishringadev was so impatient, he wanted to go to his home in Mayapur. So what he did was he set everything on fire. <laughs> so everything was on fire. The whole shed was burned. Everything was burned, but except for the DT. So then when the sculptor came, he quickly called up the devotees and told them, quick, quick devotees, come, pick up your Nishringadev. He wants to go home, he's burning everything. So the devotees quickly came and picked up Lord Nishringadev and that's where Nishringadev got his home in Mayapur Dam. And he was served with a lot of love and devotion and he protects everyone now. So I hope you liked this class. Hurry bow everybody.